inferior dimension. Before that, as I have talked about this flow and average, let's go through the account dimension first. Account dimension is the most important dimension. Let's go through the account dimension. In this account dimension, this is the main hierarchy that got created. As we have followed the traditional approach, we can see the hierarchy got created as per the traditional approach. FCC is underscore total balance sheet traditional approach. FCC is underscore uh, basically says that this is out of the box member, pre build member. And we can see the hierarchy is total assets. The second side is total liability and equity. The way we discussed yesterday. Alright. See, all these are out of the box members. And these members are something which we have created. Because there is no FCC as in prefix, that's why we identify that these are the ones which we created. If I click over here, in this account dimension, we have to set the name. That should be unique. Description, that will be used for reporting purposes. That basically can be used for reporting purposes. Alias table, we can have as many alias table. For each alias table, we can keep different alias. Account type, this property is specific to account dimension as the name suggests. We have to set the type as either expense, revenue, asset, liability, equity or saved assumption. Saved assumption is basically when we are setting up some ratio account or some assumption accounts basically. Some KPI account, key performance indicators. Alright, so let's keep it as is. This was liability as we are in liability hierarchy. So this is liability member. If we change this to asset, in that case, we have to change this consolidation operator. Otherwise, when we refresh the database, we will get error. When we validate the database, we will find it as an issue. So we will set it as liability only. Variance reporting, it can either be expense or non-expense. So variance reporting, it basically for expenditure, the, the variance is uh, budget minus actual. Correct. That means if budget is more than the actual, that is favorable for us. Actually, we save some money. Got it. For non-expense items, for profit, for other thing, for revenue, the variance formula is actual minus budget. If actual is more than the budgeted, then it is favorable for us. Getting your point? So this is variance reporting. For expenditure, it we will set it as expense. For others, we will set it as known expense. Then this time balance property is very important property and it is specific to account. It is not there in any other dimension. Time balance property, we have multiple uh, methods available over here for time balance. Let's talk about these. Flow, first, balance, average, fill, weighted average, custom and dis disable. These two we will not discuss about. We will discuss about these out of the box properties that we normally use. Alright, let me put it. Flow, fill, average, weighted average, first, last. If we have set flow, it will basically sum up the values in the quarter. So this sales account is a flow account. This is a flow account. Okay. If we set it as average, if we set it as average, it will basically show the average. That is, it will take the average. Okay. These it will take average of three values, these values, complete values. It will take average basically. Rather than summing it up, if we take weighted average, in weighted average, if you guys remember, uh, when we created the application, there was one option. It was coming like three, three, four, something like that. something okay let's let, let me show you that configuration again so weighted average is also like an average 
but it basically take the weight for specific months i think 445 it was 445 it will consider four week for first for first quarter or for first month four week for next month and five week for the third month there are total 52 weeks correct if there are 52 weeks that mean in one quarter there are 13 weeks if there are 13 week in one quarter then the distribution cannot be equal got it so weighted average basically consider the weekly distribution that ratio basically it consider the weight then first and last let's talk about first and last these two are important let's talk about the some asset account uh, accounts payable are following first that means this quarter one will pick the value for the first month that is January okay this is our first work if you are following last if you are following last then it will pick the value as for uh, the value that is there for last month that is 120 so this is last okay fill is something we never use basically it doesn't make any sense as well fill is something if you write over here 120 in quarter one it will populate the same value across for all the months and over here it will show as 360 this is something stupid so we set time balance property as per the requirement basically skip this skip basically is useful for uh, average for first and for last this is useful for these these properties for flow it is not at all useful because flow is just a simple sum if you want to for example if i doesn't if i don't have any value in january and in the march as well for example i don't have any value in the in the january in that case if i have picked first then it should be zero correct but if i enable that skip property if it is no, there is no value defined in january it will go to the next month it will go to feb it will pick the value from feb Similarly for this thing also, for, for last also, if the last month is empty, there is nothing, it will pick the value 0, correct? But if we enable skip, if we skip the value, skip the missing or zeros or missing and zero, then it will pick the value for February, that is 100. For average also, while taking the average, it will, it will not consider, for example, over here, there is no data. This profit is not at all there. So it is zero. It will not at all consider this zero. It will take the average without considering this thing. Okay. So this skip is basically useful when we are using these properties. Exchange rate type. As we know pretty clearly, for balance sheet accounts, we use ending rate. For PL, we use average rate. For uh, Historical account for historical balance sheet account we use either historical that means both the options will be available Historical amount overwrite where we just simply want to write overwrite amount historical rate overwrite where we want to write rate overwrite Then we have source queue uh, If so for example for this particular Member this particular member is valid only for console if you see over here this is not at all valid for rate cube because this is not enabled for rate see the plan type it is not enabled for rate correct so there is no logic of setting up source cube over here 
but in case account is valid for both the cubes in that case we have to set a source cube source cube is the cube where we can do the data entry and that data will get reflected to other cube as well but that is not the case in consolidation we don't see this case majorly basically data storage we already have discussed this is a common property across two pass calc we already have discussed allow upper level entity input if you want for this particular member to be allowed for data entry at a parent entity level we can we can enable this thing data type we already have discussed correct if you select a smart list then we can enable it over here enable for dynamic children we discussed that's about the account dimension I'll, I'll again go over here there are few very important items in account dimension we have multiple attributes if you see these are the attributes okay let's uh, discuss about these attributes first of all uh, let's discuss about the intercompany account if this particular account have intercompany transaction against in that case i have to select this account as intercompany account so that proper elimination can happen all right so if this is an intercompany account i can select this icps and click on this add so now this account is an intercompany account all right now there's this two members is plug account or then plug account what is plug account now plug account is basically an account that holds the difference for example I have intercompany account in the asset side I have accounts receivable in the liability side I have accounts payable these two are intercompany accounts but there can be a case where the amount that is being loaded at account receivable is different and payable is different so there are two entities for example entity a is having transaction with b underscore icp that means b entity entity b is having transaction with a underscore icp icp means intercompany partner this is recording accounts receivable this is recording accounts payable okay for b company it have recorded accounts payable as uh, uh, sorry for a it is recorded accounts receivable as $200 why because there is some goods which it have sent to B on credit and it have recorded that but B haven't received those goods and for example those goods are worth of some $20 so it have just recorded 180 it haven't recorded that $20 so there's a difference of $20 correct over here because the goods are in transit or we haven't recorded we made some mistake whatever the issue can be but there's a difference in the application if my asset and liabilities are not matching my balance sheet will not match and over here when I do consolidation I eliminate 200 from a entity I eliminate 180 from B entity that means there's a difference of 20 that will not allow the, the debits and credit side to match that will not allow the balance sheet to match for this purposes we set plug account so for account receivable and account payable we will be setting a plug account let's give an example plug underscore ac and uh, ap and ar this is a plug account we created so basically whatever the difference is there in these two uh, these two members at the parent level so for example for a and b the parent is c c underscore console C underscore console is the parent at parent level when it will eliminate the data 
in order to match the data for one side it will show minus 20 it basically depends where we put this plug account if we put it in the balance sheet if we put it on the asset side it will show minus 20 if we put it on the liability side it will show 20 this is the use of plug account all right so plug account are some dummy accounts which we create in the application these are not something which are coming from journal ledger or from the source system these are some account which we create in the application as per the requirements from client what all are the accounts they are tracking with each other for example they are tracking accounts receivable with the accounts payable account okay in that case we will create a plug account and that plug account we will attach that plug account with the accounts receivable and accounts payable so let's assume this account is the accounts payable account in that case if this is the plug account that i have created i will attach this plug account with this account so that the difference go and sit on this account now when to use is plug account is plug account will be used when we create this dummy member this member dummy member for this member we will be using is plug account yes because this is a plug account in addition to plug account this is an intercompany account as well we'll set intercompany yes as well and plug account as well let's go to the next two things is cict account cict a redirection account now uh, cict is basically for currency translation account okay. so if we already have a currency translation account defined in our application if we see the hierarchy I'll show you where it is. It should be there in equity side. See, FCCA CT account. We have this account already defined. Correct. But if because this is an out of the box account, we cannot change it. Okay. Instead of this, if a user want to show currency translation in some other place in the dimension and he don't want to use this out-of-the-box account he don't want to use his out-of-the-box account he want to use his own account and he want to place it somewhere else for example I want to place it under under the retained earnings under retained earnings also retained earnings current under somewhere over here I wanted to place that account in that case I can create my own account I can create my own account and once I create my own account, I can tag that as is CICTA? Yes, that is a CICTA account. And CICTA redirection account uh, will be basically this account. This account will be the redirection account. So that is the use. Basically, if we if we want to move if you want to use some other member for currency translation adjustment we can do that so again, not much of use functionally doesn't make much sense if it is a client requirement then only we will be using this CICTA, CICTA and other property uh, we have discussed the scenario dimension and the account dimension let's sequentially